Hi folks, Don Stimson here, Kansas Meteorite Museum and Nature Center. Uh, this video we're going to talk about uh, meteorites, are they radioactive? Uh, we've actually had folks come to the museum and say, keep the kids away from the meteorites, you know they're radioactive. And uh, when we were renewing our insurance a couple years ago, uh, the subject came up. So uh, today we're going to show that there's no need to be concerned about uh, radioactivity from um, meteorites. Well, you might wonder, how did meteorites get the reputation of being radioactive? Well, uh, I think it all started back in the uh, 40s and 50s. Blase, space travelers don't get too bored. The radiation count is jumping. Radioactive media? Looks like it. Same old story. Somebody heard somebody say something, rumors, gossip. Next thing you know, meteorites are radioactive. Okay, well, to uh, investigate radioactivity you need a device that detects radiation and uh, what we use it's it's called a uh, Geiger counter uh, not to be confused with a metal detector uh, metal detector detects metal not radiation to uh, detect uh, uh, radioactive particles you need a Geiger counter okay this is a uh, uh, a Geiger counter it consists of a Geiger Mueller tube this uh, little cylinder and the uh, circuitry to uh, drive it and every time a radioactive particle goes into the uh, end of this tube that's a very thin mica window here uh, the uh, circuitry gives a little click and a uh, flash of the uh, the LED light and one of the most surprising things for most folks at the museum when we start discussing uh, radioactivity and such is that uh, you can see the detector is going off every once in a while. Uh, it's not pointing at anything, it's not near anything, uh, and yet uh, we get a click uh, and that means a radioactive particle has gone into the end of the tube. And that's called background radiation. There is no zero. Uh, we are surrounded by a low level of radiation at all times. So where does background radiation come from? Well, some of it comes from very far out in space. Some radiation comes from the sun, mostly protons. Light takes about 8.3 minutes to get to the Earth from the sun. Protons take two or three days. Blasting into the atmosphere at the north and south poles due to the Earth's magnetic field and causing the auroras. And of course, some of the radiation just comes from Earth. Uh, the, the crust contains some radioactive elements. So, for example, uh, uranium. The American Nuclear Society has a pretty good uh, website and can actually calculate the background dose of radiation you can expect from your, your local environment. So, for example, 26 millirem per year if you're at sea level, uh, if you're higher in altitude you get more radiation. You're closer to outer space, less atmosphere to protect you. Okay, so what is radiation and what are these uh, radioactive particles? Uh, basically, they're pieces of atoms. Atoms consist of electrons, neutrons, and protons. And if the atom's unstable or it gets smacked with another particle, it can liberate uh, pieces of itself. Well, here's an example of a uh, radioactive material. It's called americium-241. Uh, a uh, little planchet, and you can see as I hold this up next to the uh, Geiger counter, and I start registering uh, radioactivity. And uh, the americium, it decays, uh, it's an unstable uh, element, and decays, uh, it kicks out a uh, alpha particle, two protons, two neutrons, so essentially a helium, the nucleus of a helium atom, and uh, also some gamma rays. And you can see it's very distance dependent, uh, also very directional and uh, it's pretty easy to stop a little piece of tin foil so. okay uh, another uh, example of a uh, slightly radioactive material are these uh, uh, lantern uh, mantles um, actually I don't think you can get these anymore I think in the US uh, the mantles do not contain uh, thorium, but uh, some of the earlier ones, thorium, when you heat it, glows white hot. So uh, I guess that's why they used that in these, uh, these uh, mantles for camping lanterns. And you can see when you hold it up there, you get a few clicks. Uh, again, I think this is an alpha emitter. Okay, last but not least, uh, let's put the uh, Geiger counter on a, uh, on a meteorite. 
This is a uh, 325 pound Brenham Palisite meteorite. And you can see we're pretty much right down uh, with uh, background levels of radiation. If I, I don't point it at anything at all, I'm going to get uh, about the same number of clicks. Okay, and what about different kinds of meteorites? That's a palisite. Uh, here's, a, here's a cut piece of it, so there's no question. Uh, there's, our, there's our Brenham palisite on the Geiger counter, background level. Here's a uh, stone meteorite from uh, Northwest Africa. Uh, again, very low background levels. Here's a uh, Canyon Diablo iron. And here's a Sakota Lean iron meteorite. I'll hold that up there. And again, uh, as, uh, as advertised, uh, no appreciable radiation associated with, uh, with meteorites, or at least no more than what you'd expect to see in uh, background levels or just uh, common earth rocks. Okay, well that's all I have for this uh, video. Hopefully it made sense and uh, you know now everything has a small amount of radioactivity associated with it. Uh, there's background radiation around us all the time. Uh, meteorites uh, are not uh, radioactive in the colloquial sense. Uh, they're at a very low level just like uh, any other old earth rock.